As promised, I'm doing some more trig identities for you. These are um, from 7.4. Some of them are from a handout that I'm going to give the link to in the description. And uh, let's dig right in. I think I've got about five questions here, some from your textbook as well. So using related and correlated angles. Now the handout that I'm giving you that's on the PD Wiki site has um, about 50 different identities. It's really well organized and it talks about different sections. So you have things like Pythagorean relationships or double angle or addition subtraction formulas. And then in the end, they mix them all up. So let's take a look at this one using related and correlated angles. So the sine of pi minus x, so we really need to make a quick sketch here with our cast rule on it and figure out where we are. So the sine of pi minus x would be the sine of x. So I'm going to start with left side. So the sine of pi minus x is just sine x. The sine of the tan of pi plus x, well, tan's positive there, so that's just the tan of x, times the cotangent of pi over 2 minus x, cotangent. Now remember, when you see pi over 2, you're thinking correlated angles. So we have to switch to its co-function. So tan goes to, well, first of all, pi over 2 minus x, we're in this quadrant, so we don't have to worry about the sine. And cotan goes to tan. So the cotan of pi over 2 minus x is just the tan of x. And in the denominator, the tan of pi over 2 plus x, so pi over 2 here, plus x. Now we didn't do any of these previously, that's why I wanted to bring that up here. So in this quadrant, so tan is going to be negative in this quadrant, right? The tan of pi over 2 plus x is negative, and it goes to its cofunction, and the cofunction of tan is cotan. So this is the negative cotan of x. And times the cos of pi over 2, that's way over here, pi over 2 minus x, that's just going to be the cos of x, because I'm in the cos quadrant. So cos x and the sine of negative x. So that means going this way, negative angle. So the sine of negative x will be the negative sine of x. Okay, so now we've got all this and we need to simplify it a bit. Now everything is multiplied together here and everything is in a little package so we can divide numerators and denominators. So this tan would go into this tan. I have a negative and a negative in the denominator. That would just make a positive, so we can get rid of those. And the sine goes into sine here. And now I have cos divided by cotangent. So that's cos x. Sometimes people find it easier if you write it like this horizontally rather than vertically. And that's cos x times cotan is cos over sine, so if I divide it, that's going to make it sine over cos. And finally, I can divide those into each other, and I'm left with sine x. So left side equals right side. And you should state what your right side was over here, just to have nice format. Okay, so watch those little ones here. You want to write them as they're related acute angles first. Obviously, you would because if you look to the right, your answer is just going to be sine x. Always take a look on both sides to see um, where you're going. Okay, second one is using an addition subtraction formula. So we have 3 pi over 4 here. So we should be able to evaluate some of these once we expand it. And it's going to be equal to zero. So obviously this is the only side to work with. So my left side, we're doing addition subtraction formula for cos. So remember that cos of a plus b was equal to cos cos. Remember that? Cos cos. And you change the sign for cos minus sine sine. And the subtraction formula for sine, so the sine of a minus b, that's sine a cos b, 
you keep the sign, the same sign it has here, minus cos A sine B. Okay, so I'm going to use that to expand these. So the cos of 3 pi over 4 cos cos sine sine. So I'm going to say cos 3 pi over 4 cos cos minus sine sine. Now, sometimes you do all that and you think you're done. You haven't done this one yet, so hang on. Okay, now plus the sine of 3 pi over 4, the cos of x, and we're going to subtract because the sine keeps the same sine, the sine, the cos of 3 pi over 4, and the sine of x. Okay, so now... Ideally, you should write these as their related acute angles. So let's make a little thing here, a little thing. So the cos of 3 pi over 4, that's putting me in this quadrant, C-A-S. Okay, so sine is positive. Here's 3 pi over 4. And you know that's true because this is 4 pi over 4 here. Always good idea to rewrite this with its, uh, you know, like, pi if it's over 4 is 4 over 4, 6 over 6, something like that. And this would be your 8 pi over 4, obviously. Okay, so we're in this quadrant. Sine is positive. Everything else is negative. So the cos of 3 pi over 4 is going to be the negative cos of pi over 4 times the cos of x. The sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive in that quadrant. So we're just going to say that's the sine of pi over 4, so minus sine pi over 4 sine x. And now we have the sine of 3 pi over 4. Again, it's going to keep its sine. So the sine of 3 pi over 4, oh, sorry, I wanted to change it to acute angles. So pi over 4 cos x, pi over 4 cos x. And the negative cos of 3 pi over 4, so that's going to be the negative of the negative cos of pi over 4, which means plus cos pi over 4 sine x. Now pi over 4, that's your 1, 1 root 2, 1, 1 square root 2. So pi over 4, the cos and sine are the same, that's 1 over root 2. So let's plug that in now. So we have negative 1 over root 2 cos x minus 1 over root 2 sine x plus 1 over root 2 cos x. I think you can see where this is going. Plus 1 over root 2 sine x. I'm not even going to bother to rationalize the denominator because as you can see, I have a negative, a positive, a negative, a positive. They all add up to zero. And there you go. Okay, so that's an example with addition subtraction formula, finding the related acute angles first and then evaluating them. Okay, a little more difficult question might involve factoring of a difference of cubes. And that's what I'm going to do for you here. This one it looks harder than it is, and sometimes, you know, you see those uh, cos to the 6th x plus sine to the 6th x, so you should be thinking a sum of cubes like this. Remember this formula from, I don't know, we did that back quite a while ago. So before I start, I'm just going to leave the right side alone. I'm going to work with the left side, and I'm going to rewrite the left side like this. Cos squared x cubed plus sine squared x cubed. And that way you can see that this is like my a value and this is my b. So if I write that out now in um, factored form here, so that's going to be cos squared x plus sine squared x. That should be ringing a little bell for you. So that's my, remember this is like A and this is like B here. So I have A plus B times, now I'm going to square A. So cos squared x squared is going to be cos to the fourth x. Okay, so I'm just squaring this one. 
minus this times this, so minus um, minus cos squared x sine squared x. So let's put big brackets around this like this because this is my a plus b here and this is my a a squared minus a b plus b squared. So that's going to be plus sine to the fourth x. Okay, so where are we going to go from that? You should recognize this identity here. Cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. All right, so let's write that right over top here. So this is equal to 1. So I just have 1 times all of this. Okay, so now I just have this to work with. Cos to the fourth x. Um, now if you look on the right side here, again, so I've... I'm, I'm going to write this out just so you see where I'm at here. Cos fourth x minus cos squared x sine squared x plus sine to the fourth x. Now there is a sine to the fourth x here and there is a sine squared x. But if you know on the right side, there are no cosines, no cos, right? So somehow I have to get rid of these these coses in here. So what's cos to the fourth x? Hmm. How can I write that with just sines? So we do know that sine, um, sorry, that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to one. So a cos squared x would be equal to one minus sine squared x. And that's kind of the key to this question. So a cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. What would a cos to the fourth x be? Well, that times that, right? Two of them. Cos squared x times cos squared x is cos to the fourth x. So I'm going to replace this by two of these. 1 minus sine squared x times 1 minus sine squared x. And that's just replacing this, right? All of this was a cos to the fourth x. Okay, so I've got rid of that. Now I still have the rest of this to deal with. So I have minus, um, where was I? Up here. So I have minus sine squared x, but I have to get rid of this cos squared x as well. Because like I said, my answer only has sines in it, so I'm replacing all of those. So this cos squared x and be really careful with your signs here. So I'm going to put a big bracket here as I replace this cos squared x with another 1 minus sine squared x. And that's going to be times sine squared x. Okay, that's all this. Plus sine to the fourth x. Okay, it's looking kind of messy. But as we expand, you're going to see this is going to come up really pretty for you. So 1 minus sine squared x times 1 minus sine squared x. 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, so we've got 1, 1 times 1, minus sine squared, minus sine squared. So that's minus 2 sine squared x. And a negative times a negative is a plus, plus sine to the fourth x. Well, that's good because I remember I had three of them so now I've got one and I had one over here let's see what we can get out of this so again um, the minus just be careful as you're expanding and I think you can handle this one because it's only it's it's pretty simple expansion so I have a minus a sine squared x that's going to be plus minus a minus right so this times this oh just a minute that's Going too far ahead. That was the other one I was looking at. So 1 times sine squared x times minus is minus sine squared x. And minus sine squared x times sine squared x is sine to the fourth negative times a negative is a plus. So plus sine to the fourth x plus sine to the fourth x. I think we've got it now, right? So we have one, two, three of those. That's what we wanted. And I have one minus 2, minus 1 more. So there we go. We've got it. 1 minus 3 sine squared x plus 
3 sine to the 4th x. Okay, so I hope you kind of stopped and tried that on your own to make sure you could do it. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. That was kind of a lot of work, right? But you just have to play around with them. Okay, 11 H is from uh, one of your homework questions, and I wanted to do that one because it's using a double angle formula. So we have cosecant 2x plus cotangent 2x equals cotangent x. Okay, so let's, oh, we didn't really finish this one nicely, right? You should have said right side equals blah, 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 and therefore left side equals right side. That's a nice proof. Okay, so let's look at the right side over here. That's a nice, easy one. So I'm going to just see what do I want to end up with here. Cotan, tan is sine over cos, so cotan is cos over sine. So I have cos x over sine x. Okay, so let's go to the left-hand side here now. We have um, left side equals cosecant 2x. Cosecant is 1 over the sine of 2x. Okay, and cotan 2x, so cotan 2x, Again, that would be um, cotan is cos over sine, so that's cos 2x over sine 2x. Okay, so I've got that down. Now, what am I going to do with my equation here? So sine 2x, there's only one formula for that, so that's 1 over 2 sine x cos x. And to this, in the numerator, the cos of 2x, uh, let's get the denominator up first. So we have the same denominator here, no problem. Okay, and I'm looking over to the right side. So somehow I have to get rid of these cos x's, right? And a 2. So I have cos 2x. Now remember, cos 2x, you've got three formulas to choose from. So you want to choose wisely. <laughs> and that's where the trick comes in. You have to think about your three different formulas for cos 2x and how am I going to get rid of one of the cos x's. Obviously, you're going to have to use a cos 2x formula that uses cos, right? Because i got to get rid of a cos. So if you choose 2 cos squared x minus 1, now, this means I have 1 plus this, right? So I have 1 plus 2 cos squared x minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is gone. And look what I've got here now. I've got 2 cos squared x. I keep looking to the right side. You're going to say, yep, it's done. It's done. Sine x cos x. Oh, 2's cancel out. And I've this is like cos times cos over cos, so one of those with this one, and I'm left with cos x over sine x. Right down at the bottom of the page here. You never know how long it's gonna, how much room I'm going to need. So now I've proven it, it's done. Left side equals right side. And I like to say QED. There it ha therefore it has been proven. So that's 11H from your homework textbook if you're using uh, a Nelson book. Okay, the other Nelson question I want to do for you is one that um, my students always had trouble with, and so I promised I promised to do it for them, and I promised to do it for you. So what I've done here, here's what you're asked to prove here. Prove that secant t equals sine 2t over sine t, blah, blah. So here's my three formulas for cos 2t. That's not cos 2x, cos 2 theta, cos 2t, doesn't matter, right? So I have cos squared t minus sine squared t. I have 2 cos squared t minus 1, and I have 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Okay, so the left side, we'll just write that one over here because that's the easy side. So let's make it into, we've got sines and cosines, let's make this into 1 over cos t. So that's secant t, right? 
So that's what I'm trying to get to. Now look, I've got a sine and a cos. I've got two things. Somehow I'm going to have to find a common denominator to combine these to get this one little solution. <coughs> okay, so what I'm going to show you here is that you could choose any of these three equations. I'm going to number them one, two, three, and we're going to look at doing each one of them. So, you know, there's there's often more than one way to prove an identity, and that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So the right side, sine 2t. Well, there's only one formula for sine 2t. That's 2 sine t cos t over sine t. And for the first cos 2t, I'm going to choose this top equation. So cos squared t minus sine squared t all over cos of t. Okay, so I need to um, I need to get a common denominator of cos t because look at the right side. So I'm going to um, I'm going to multiply this by cos t. Well, first of all, before you start, you can see that I have sine t over sine t, right? That makes, can get rid of that. So I really have 2 cos t, and I'm going to put this over cos t. Make this all one big thing here now. So if I multiply this by cos t, I multiply the top by cos t, and that gives me 2 cos squared t. Okay, now watch this minus sign because this is where, if you're going to make a mistake, this is where it's going to happen. So I have cos squared t. So I have minus cos squared t plus sine squared t because I'm subtracting all of this, right? And 2 cos squared t minus a cos squared t, that's 1 cos squared t cos squared t plus sine squared t over cos t. Now, you can't divide these out. Okay, please be careful. If there's a plus sign, you can't divide things. They have to be multiplied. But I do know that cos squared t plus sine squared t equals, you got it, 1. Okay, so that's 1 over cos t. Now, some teachers ask you to give what rule you're using and some don't but um, I never did but your teacher might so make sure you're following his or her rules. So this was question using formula one. So let's try it using formula two which is two cos squared t minus one for cos two t. Now this part of the equation from here to here is still going to be the same right because I'm still working with this so I'm just going to start with this part of the equation so right side equals so we're going to have 2 cos squared t over cos t and now I'm just going to change what I put here so I have minus and again be careful with your minus sign put a bracket and instead of cos 2t I'm going to use 2 cos squared t minus 1. And then I'm going to expand by multiplying by negative 1 here. So I have 2 cos squared t minus 2 cos squared t Ooh, plus 1. Oh, that looks like the easiest one, didn't it? Because I'm done. Here's 1 over cos t again. Yeah, that was definitely the fastest one. And finally, we're going to do question three by using the same part here. Remember that we kept this here, the, the left side of this little equation. So I have 2 cos squared t over cos t. And now I'm going to subtract this time 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Okay, so be really careful with those minus signs. And here we go. So we have 2 cos squared t min oh, minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared t over cos t. 
cos t. So 2 cos squared t minus 1 plus 2 sine squared t's. Well, I know that cos squared t plus sine squared t is 1. So what if I just factored a 2 out of this? I'm going to, re I'm going to rearrange the equation first just so you don't say, whoa, what did you do there? Okay, so watch this. Okay, so I've rearranged it, and now I'm going to factor out the two. So I've got two out of these two terms, because what I'm left with here is equal to one. Right, this is one. Cos squared t plus sine squared t is one. And then I have two. This again is one. This is one. This whole thing here is one. And so I have 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get 1 over cos t again. Okay, so maybe um, when you're doing this one, um, what was I just thinking? Cos squared t plus sine squared t, you have, to, you have to watch what you're trying to get to, right? Again, I only wanted 1 here, and I have all this stuff on the top, so somehow... I had to make numbers only out of this, and that's how I knew to factor out the two. So again, keep watch to the other side of the equation. Um, keep checking where you're going and where you're coming from and, and what sort of substitutions you can use, and I think you'll be fine. Okay, so I hope those questions helped you. If you have any others you'd like me to do for you online, just leave a note in the comment. Please subscribe, like, my videos and make me happy and I hope I've made you happy too. Bye for now.